I remember it like it was yesterday, watching Google announce the Pixelbook on stage at the second ever October hardware event they hosted in San Francisco. It was a crowning achievement in my eyes, seeing a Chromebook up on stage right alongside new Pixel hardware. And even though it took a lot of the tech media a bit of time to come around to the brilliance that still is the Pixelbook, I was mesmerized right away. I knew it was an important piece of hardware and that it would shape the future of Chromebooks in significant ways. And it did that, there's no question about it. And much of the Chromebook and Chromebook Plus landscape we have today is thanks in no small part to the impact of this exceptional Chromebook. But what about seven years later? Does a device that was so amazing in 2017 still hold its luster so many years after its launch? Let's talk about it. Well, I won't bury the lead on this one. It totally does. Using the Pixelbook, not even the highest end version of it in 2024 is still fantastic. It's not perfect, but still awesome. And we'll get into all of that. But with this video, I don't really need to tell you whether or not to go buy one. I mean, that time frame has long since passed at this point. Instead, I simply want to shine a light on perhaps the most iconic, influential Chromebook ever made and see if it still holds up so many years after it arrived. And that conversation absolutely must start with the build quality. We've talked about this a ton on our channel and on the website, but few Chromebooks ever reach the lofty standards that Google made hardware reaches. The ones that have are on a short list that include devices like the original Chromebook Pixels, Pixelbook, Pixel Slate, Pixelbook Go, Samsung's original Galaxy Galaxy Chromebook and HP's Dragonfly Pro Chromebook. And I'd still say the Pixelbook is number one among them all. But we'll talk about performance and all that stuff in a second, but I can't overstate the ingenuity that went into the Pixelbook's design. From the way it feels to the way it looks, this device is an anomaly among not just Chromebooks, but laptops in general. I hadn't held one in quite some time, so when this loaner was given back to me a couple weeks ago, I was once again just struck by how well made this Chromebook is. Put it this way, Google could swap the internals of the Pixelbook, shrink the screen bezels a little bit, and launch this Chromebook today, and it would still look iconic, amazing, and unique. Nothing has been made to look like the Pixelbook since it launched, and I'm not sure anything ever will. The glass accents on the lid that perfectly match the palm rest and the rubber feet, and the thoughtfulness of the overall aesthetic, the rigidity, the absurd thinness of it all still takes me by surprise when I pick this Chromebook up. It's phenomenal. It was in 2017, and it still is today. It's also purpose-built to be a convertible, with the squared-off sides matching up perfectly as it converts into tablet mode, and those expertly built hinges also allowing for a one-finger lift of the lid that just honestly defies physics. I still don't know how they pulled that off. And the rigidity of the frame allows for minimal travel in the keyboard that still somehow feels fantastic, and a glass trackpad that, to this day, is still one of my favorites for its smooth its precision, and its clickiness. Both are just an absolute joy to use. But there are issues too. The silicon palm rest, for example, and the feet are clearly no longer white. That's a consequence Google surely saw coming, right? And the bezels around the screen feel kind of silly these days. And I'd wager something like the 13.5 inch screen we have in devices like the Acer Chromebook Spin 513 would sit in this frame much nicer than the existing 12.3 inch screen we have right now and still give you some room to hold on to it around the edges when it's in tablet mode. But none of that's really a deal breaker. The screen is bright, very color accurate. So there's not much to complain about there. But the 720p camera above it, terrible, absolutely terrible. But it was made three years before the pandemic though, so what are you gonna do? But all the lovely design, aesthetics, look and feel don't mean really that much if the device is slow as dirt these days. But thankfully, the seventh gen, yes, seventh gen, Intel Core i5 inside is still really solid. And with eight gigs of RAM alongside it, you can really be productive. I noticed a hiccup here and there, but overall the Pixelbook's performance hasn't been an issue. With a Quad HD screen attached with my monitor on the desk, when I'm moving between a bunch of windows and a lot of virtual desk, yes, I can see a stutter here and there, but most times I don't really think about the speed at all. And apart from the very Spartan port selection, I have no issues whatsoever in using this Chromebook pretty much full time. There's nothing holding me back from doing my standard work, and on the plus side, I get to tote around a piece of hardware that somehow, despite being seven years old, feels like it's from the future in some aspects. Google truly outdid themselves with this device, and while I get it, why they aren't building Chromebooks any longer, it still makes me a little bit sad about that whole situation when I use the Pixelbook. 
It's just so good and so nice to use that I just, I wonder what it would be like if we had four or five iterations of it by this point. Like, I suppose we'll never know, but it's still fun to be able to pick up a device that started an entire movement and not just look at it, but actually be able to use it. It's a testament to how long lasting and awesome Chromebooks are. And I'd bet in a few years as the Pixelbook turns 10, a similar test will be able to be run with similar results. It's just that good. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification icon if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.